Here you can see our Seaberg 200 wall locks. Uh, I got this off eBay for uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $1 to $200. I actually forget now. I know it was less than $200. And it was in pretty good shape. Just for some examples here, it has all of your little uh, song selections here. And this is actually at the end of the project. It's already completely wired with the Raspberry Pi and tied into Sonos. So let's see if we can play a song here. We'll do E0. And you can hear the mechanism running. As it goes through. It takes a little second. And there we go. Now we have the song playing. So I'm going to add back to it to have T0 stand for Terminate 0. And that will stop playing. And so then we, uh, we've stopped playing. Let's open it up and check out what's inside. Okay. Let's open this guy up. So you have a key over here that holds the whole thing together. Because remember... In uh, a real installment, there'd be money in here, <clears throat> so they had a uh, key lock, which I would just generally leave in. And then the front cover just sort of slides off. Depending on your mount, this might be easier. I actually generally pick a key and sort of push gently, pull at the top, and there we go. It is coming free. And the stores, this would be on a bracket. Uh, for me, the, this friction is from the bottom plate sort of catching. There we go, all the way through. So this front piece is pretty heavy, comes off. And now we have the uh, inside of the unit starting to look a little more interesting. So to take off these uh, list of songs, two clamps there, and then it just sort of lifts off. And now, okay, so you can see this side is largely original. Uh, you have the coin calculating sort of machinery here. This is all analog hand-wired machinery. You could change the price of songs with these jumpers. You have a 6-volt transformer over here which lights up all these little lights. Uh, and this break, this is, transforms the 25 volts down to 6 volts that it was originally powered with. So over here on this right left side is all our new stuff. This is a 110 volt to 25 volt transformer. This is a USB power supply. This is the little circuitry to step down the voltages. Uh, behind here is our Raspberry Pi. Uh, so and all the way down here at the bottom is where it would originally have hooked out to a, a main unit, but we've hooked off that to go to our unit. So if we look at the side here, we can see this thing in all its mechanical glory. That if you hit, I'm going to go ahead and just do the terminate so nothing plays. This actually spins, and these little contacts down here this, this, this wiper goes across these contacts and sends pulses. And that's the physical representation of the pulses we're reading with our software. So it's sort of cool to see the physical and digital world connect here. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the physical mechanism. So we know we push buttons here and we get signals to our Raspberry Pi up here. But what's actually going on here? So when you push a button, you're actually completing a circuit between this button along this big bundle of wires here, up to this wheel. So you can see this wheel has little pegs all the way around it, and this wiper is going to wipe across them. These metal dots, each one on the other side, is hooked to a wire, which is hooked down here to these switches. When you push a button, you actually ground out from this point on. And when you push two buttons, it runs the wiper. So you can see we're going around, it's hit all those. So as I was saying, this wiper goes around, hits these dots, depending on rounded out where you've pressed. And so how are we going to decipher these? Because these are AC signals. So if we were able to look at them on a little diagram, which hopefully I'll have on the video, you'll see it's a sine wave going up and down, of course. And you saw how slow this moved. So in my country, in this part of Japan, these signals, the, the AC signal goes up and down at 60 times per second. Uh, in parts of Europe and other areas, it's 50 times per second. But either way, wow, the AC must have gone up a couple hundred times during that the time it took to go around this rotation. So there's going to be several AC pulses per time it hits here. Um, and that's what we have to filter out. So luckily, those times are much shorter duration than the time when there's nothing in between these dots. And then this big space in between the letters and numbers. So these are the letters, these are the numbers, and this space will detect 
to be able to tell the difference. So it's an interesting piece of technology. Those uh, Seaberg engineers probably knew what they were doing. Um, so it's actually a beautiful box, beautiful mechanics, uh, beautiful electromechanics, and uh, it's something they don't make anymore. Of course, if you were to make this today, all of this would be replicated, of course, on a, on a simple little chip. I mean, even a Raspberry Pi is overkill, an Arduino or something would take care of all of this work, and you just have buttons on a digital pad, and it would be easy. It would probably cost you 10 bucks to make. Uh, this is a, an interesting piece. And it's not like they were setting out to make a beautiful piece of art that was what was available at the time, and it's pretty nice. So that's it for this little segment. Let's see what else we got.